In this video we're going to do something a little bit different. We're doing an LT77 out of a Rover P6. So a chap in Ottawa uh, contacted me and asked me if I'd be comfortable to have a look at uh, a Rover P6 transmission. This, these were called the Rover 2000, 2200 and Rover 3500 in the UK. Uh, nice car actually, I quite like them. I didn't really know there was any over here. But anyway, there is. And this is the transmission. Uh, as you can see, it's got the familiar familiarities of a LT77, but after that, it's two-wheel drive. The speedo is here on the back, but it looks just the same. Uh, one noticeable feature is the input shaft here, uh, the primary motion shaft, that goes into your flywheel. It must go onto a bearing inside the inside the flywheel. A lot better idea. So what we're going to do is going to We've got some plastic boxes here and we're going to sort of methodically try and take this to bits. So first of all we're going to take the end nut off. Uh, so that needs a big gun to take that off. Um, I was looking at this and I was just thinking, well, are these uh, fittings metric or they're inch? It's an old box, I don't, I'm not really sure. So anyway, we'll... we'll, we'll... Take much getting off, did it? Oh, neither did that. I thought we were going to have to have pullers. So I think we're going to have to take this little piece off here. I don't think there's any oil in it, but we'll find out, won't we? All right, let's get that off. Is that 13 millimeter or a half inch? It seems to fit. Now, where's my hammer? Uh, I seem to be all backwards with my tools. Oh, that didn't take much getting over either, did it? Yeah, I'm not really sure. I've been working down the bottom end and... Looks like it's metric. I think... Didn't Leyland cars go metric? In their sort of... Early 80s. And I'm not sure. I've got a sneak, I can't remember exactly because this has been going on for quite a while. But I'm not sure if this has been a conversion from a an automatic to a manual. I'm not really sure. And it's really just to give it a a check through, make sure everything's alright. Before it puts it in. It might be fine. I have no history of this car. Nothing. I've done it I've done this before a long time ago. But uh, can I get in there? LT77 seem to be pretty much of a muchness there. Well, just about the same. Except for the back bits. We don't know what we're going to get in here because, like they said, the, the suffix number is 17A suffix C. Kind of interesting. So we'll take our. Oh, 
stopping that from coming off. Oh, did we have to take the speedo drive out? Oh, it's ATF in it. Something binding here. Ah. All it wanted was a good yank. Uh, we can see a lot of similarities with the old LT seventy sevens. There's your oil pump, your uh, transfer to go to the main shaft pickup pipe. This looks a bit dodgy, and it's very thin at the bottom. Notice there's no oil filter in it. Now we seem to have got a bit of an oil slick going on here. Get rid of much oil as we can. Seems to be literally spewing out. That'll be alright. Now, put that to one side. There's a circlip on here. This must be the the. F Oops, that was embarrassing. Um, is this the? Th yeah, that's the fifth, isn't it? There's a circlip here. We've got to take off, and I bet you we've got to take those two bolts out of here. Yeah, we have to do it because otherwise it's not going to come off. We don't need a 13 mil. I say keep all the bits in a logical order. The teeth look good on the gears. Yeah, there's not much to them, is there really, when you think about it? Kind of straightforward. Shaft all seems nice. We'll clean all that lot up, make it look nice. There we go, that's that bolt out of there. And we can slide this out. Now we're going to make note of which way does that go in. That little shuttle goes that way. That is the outside and that is the bottom. Oh, you said bottom. We've got to put the screws back in here because I think these are a mission critical length. Is that going to come out? Hmm. Oh, I see, I'm stuck on the pin. There we go. Same idea as LT77. We'll take the little slippers off in case we lose them. So we'll put that screw into there. If you sort of pick up an indiscriminate screw off the floor or something like that and screw it in, there's a good chance of you hitting the gears inside. We don't want that. So, it looks like I'm going to have to get a pair of circuit pliers. Get that off. Well, I think we've shed enough blood for now. See why I always use paper towels, what rather than rags? They're not really worth washing rags because it gets oily. These oily rags have a tendency 
to clog your washing machine. Right? right, so we want external. Now, we have to be careful, like I say, with these because we might end up putting these back on because I don't know what size they are. You should buy in all accounts. Put new ones on anyway. Right, will this slide off? Yes. Yes. We need a tool to pry that off with. When you're not sure of things, you know, like just clip them together and should be fine. Now that's the synchro unit, so it's tight on the synchro. Right, might call for a bigger bar. Indeed. Now there's the bearings look. bearings and a spacer. Again, tie wrap them up. Oh, that's a bit short that one. There! Now we've got another circlip on here and I see a ring here, and that means that looks like it's going to be tight. Now I don't know. When you see that little ring piece on there, I don't think I've got a pull to get that off. And those are too big. And there she goes. Now, as I expected, we were going to have to think of a puller to pull this gear off. It's not sort of advisable to go around the teeth, but I'm just going to just try it, see if it will move. I don't think so. I think that's a different size to my LT77 puller. Well, well, bugger me, well. Ha! Huh. It's the same size. Now, let's get that. Well, let's try it. Yeah, it's good, ain't it? Ah, it's paid back for itself many times this too. I just wonder if we can get enough length on it. No, we can't. We need this other British Leyland tool. Space aromatic. Even then I have my doubts if that's going to be the right one. Fifteen, sixteen. Hey! That got him off. So there's the retention ring off. Oh, you trickster. You trickster, there's another one there. Right. 
Not one but two rings, that's unusual isn't it? I obviously didn't want that to come off. Tricky little circlips and also... <laughs> Really for the DIY mechanic, I think you'd never get that off. I'm just wondering how the hell they're going to get it back on. Still, tough. Now, clear some space. Get rid of some more of this blood. Now I'm not going to put this on the stand to dismantle it. I'm just sort of going to pull it off, pull it to bits, uh, and work it out later. Because after that, it's good. This to me, the shimming and things like this seems really, really good. It doesn't seem bad at all. In fact, I don't think we really need to shim it up. Because that's it's nice and tight and it feels nice. Breather. Must be a breather. Now, while it's in this position, it would be a good thing to get the uh, the detent locator out there, the little screw. Now I'm not sure if that's going to come out or not because it had a punch mark over it. If you put your, your uh, key down the bottom, not at the top, you get less likelihood of it Coming out. There we go. There's the spring. There's the ball down at the bottom. Now, can we get the ball out? Come out. So what we're going to have to do is be careful when we take that out to remember where it's gone so it doesn't fall off the bench. Right, next thing we'll separate these cases. Dowels through here. Sometimes I get tight on the dowel. Available in the shop. <laughs> We're in. Like I say, when we assemble this, we'll do it a different way. So 
looking very good. It's looking really good. We'll do another video on checking this. But first of all, we need to strip what's left of this down. Now, this should move forward. I think we've got to take the reverse out first. Let's turn it on its side. We should be able to take that pin out. So what we're trying to do is take this pin out first, this one here, so we can get this reverse assembly off so we can pull the main shaft out. Um, it is a bit tricky to see. Got it. That was exciting, wasn't it? So we're going to take that off. There's the pin. Slide that forward, taking note that that fell off that way. The pin back in the hole. With the clip. And we can take the reverse gear out. And now, with a bit of luck, this main shaft should come out. Now we've got to pay attention for the little ball it's going to fall on the bench. This pin has to be horizontal and go into there. See what I mean? When it comes out. Yep, there's the space for the reverse. This looks beautiful. It really does. So, feels nice. You can see the, the size of the bearings are really small, you know, they're really small little bearings. But they look remarkably good. The ATF is a very good oil because it, uh, it's a detergent oil. It's got a lot of chlorine in it, so keeps things nice. Now I'm not sure what what steps we're going to do now. Uh, I've seen these must have the shims behind here, have they? Oh no, no, it's the LT77, isn't it? It's the R380 had the shims there, so this will have the shims under here. Oh, let's take that up then. I'm not sure what to do with this. Like the bearings are nice. This is all lovely. There's no like chattered gears or anything like that. See the thing is I'm not sure of the size of the synchro rings but when you look at the synchro rings here you can see there's no burrs or anything on that one. Mind you that is top gear. But they don't look burred at all. I'm not sure if it's worth taking apart. In the There we go. There's the shims. Ew. 
even the oil seal looks good. It's really sharp and flexible too. That's a good sign. You said losing the bearing. Oh, let's get the bearing race out of there as well. Because we're going to clean and paint this casing. I'm going to put the bolts in the holes. Because when we sandblast, we're going to minimise the amount of sand getting into threads. Especially these ones that go inside the casing. Gotta get these gaskets off. But inside it's lovely. It really is lovely. Uh, there's a magnet on there, we'll get out in a minute. But I think for now that's all we can do. I, I don't think it needs many parts actually. The only concern I've got is the synchros, but I'm gonna to talk to the owner. So he can tell me the history of this box. Because it is, it does, I don't think anybody's been in it before. But I think the condition of it's really, really good. You know? Anyway, that's that. See you later.